In this video, we are going to look at the US Postal Service Web Tools APIs. We are gonna specifically explore the address verification endpoint, but everything you see today, you can apply to the other Web Tools APIs, and we will be working with JavaScript and Node.js. Now, before we get started, you do need to go and register at usps.com and get your username and password. You'll get an email that looks a little bit like this. I've covered my username and password, of course, but this is a screenshot of the email that you receive when you register. That username is your API key. The password, you don't really need for calling your API, so you can ignore that for now. And basically, you'll have to set a user ID parameter on your XML equal to your username. We'll get into that later, but I just want to make sure you've got everything you need to play along with us today. So to get started, we're going to open up our terminal first. All right, I'm in my terminal. And the first thing I want to do is I want to make a new directory. So let's go make dir, I'm going to call it demo and I'm going to change into my demo directory. And I want to make sure that my machine has all the tools installed. So I need two of those. I need node and I need NPM. So I'll check node by typing node-v to see what version I've installed. If I don't have it installed, it's going to let me know. Same thing with NPM. I'm going to check the version and it's installed. So I'm good to go. Now the first command we want to use is in uh, npm init so npm init and if i hit enter now i'm going to get asked several questions um, if i just want to accept the default i can type dash y and hit enter and it's going to create my package.json file and it will tell me that my entry point for my app is index.js uh, you can customize this if you like but i'm happy with the defaults and my package.json is how I'm going to manage those additional libraries that I'll use for today's project. Now, uh, I like to use Visual Studio Code. You can use whatever IDE that you prefer. Uh, I actually have a shortcut. So from my terminal, I can type code.period, hit enter, and it's automatically going to launch uh, VS Code. Uh, this is something that uh, if you do a quick Google, you can learn how to install that command as well on your uh, Mac and your machine. Uh, all right, so the first thing I need here is index.js. So I will create a new file. And I like to just type the name of my file as the first line in my file. And then I hit Control S and then it saves it with that name into my folder. So now I can erase that from my editor and I've got a nice file set up. Now, in order to make an API call, I need an HTTP client library. There is one called XML HTTP request, which is native to JavaScript. And we could use that, but the code is a little bit verbose that you use and it doesn't support async await, uh, which is promise-based syntax and is quite popular uh, with a lot of JavaScript developers today. So you might choose something like Fetch or Axios. For this project, we are gonna work with Axios. So I'm gonna drop over here and I'll do npm install, sorry, npm i dash uh, space Axios. And I'm gonna hit enter. And this is gonna install my library. And if I do an ls, I can see I now have a node underscore modules folder and package.lock json so that's all in here as well in my ide so in order to use these i need to instantiate them so um, you can look at what i'm putting onto the screen or if you go over to npm and you install this using the little install command here uh, you can scroll down and we can go and grab uh, this little line of code this is how we import this library for use in our project. So I just put that in there and that's looking good. And now let's go ahead and add the code that will help us build a URL and make that Axios call. All right, so I went and copied this off of a, a notepad 
so I can show you we can focus on the code instead of me typing so I'm going to expand my window just a little bit and here we can see I have a variable called XML that's empty when you make an API call to the USPS uh, APIs you need to pass in a query param actually you need to pass in two one is called API and you set that equal to whatever action you want to take we want to verify so you can see on our URL we're passing in this query param API equals verify and this is all in the documentation and then you can also pass in uh, you need to pass in a query param called XML and this will be your package so if we're verifying an address we have to pass in all the address uh, details so that we can get it verified by the API and that has to be encoded because all those little angle brackets in XML would get messed up if it wasn't encoded now in with Axios, you can do all kinds of things. You can call all kinds of uh, methods. You can call, you can con, you can do put and post. You know, you patch. You know, so if I want to do a post, I could. I do a get. But in this case, we are doing a get, and we're just passing in our URL, and then we are waiting for a response, and we are doing a console log. Let me fix my code here. I want to capture the response, and on my response, there is data, and I want to know what that data says. Now this is incomplete code, but it never hurts to run your code every so often just to see what happens. So I'm gonna drop back here and I'm gonna type in node space index.js and run my code. Now it just hit the API and it says here that please check the XML request to see if to see if it can be parsed. So there's a problem. It's because our XML string is empty right now. Now I'm going to take a, a little pause and mention that the folks here at Lob have created a new version of the documentation for developers using the USPS Web Tools APIs. This is an open source project. We did this because we wanted to help with the developer experience. There's an API spec that these docu this documentation is generated from, and it's got a really nice UI. And if you click on address and choose verify us address you can see here's the example url up here and you can also see we've got our query params including an example of our xml now you can copy this and you could paste it in your code uh, and then you have to sort of take out all the the line breaks and the backspaces and everything and so i've already done that i'm going to go and grab that little code snippet and replace it in our project for you right now Okay, so I'm gonna make sure we remove this other um, XML variable and we're gonna paste in our new one. So uh, if I had copied and pasted it from this documentation, I then would have gone and made it all fit on one line here so that it doesn't throw any errors in JavaScript. So this is looking good, uh, but you'll see my user ID hasn't been set. This is the username that you got when you registered. So you could uh, pop it in there now, but Let's go ahead and save this and let's run this code again and see what happens. All right, so now I'm getting a different error message. It says perhaps the username or password is incorrect. So yes, that's true. Let me go get my um, username and I'm gonna pop it in there so we can test this code. All right, so I've pasted my username into that uh, into the user ID equals my username um, right in this address validate request. Um, element, but I'm redacting it so you won't see it in this video right now. But I'm going to save it. Just trust me, my username is there. I'm going to hit uh, node space index.js. I'm going to run it and I get a response back. Yes, there's a second library that I want to show you today. That is the XML Builder 2 library, which you can get from NPM. And if I come here, I can copy that and I can import that, uh, install that into my project. So I'll install the package. And then I'm going to want to, I'm gonna to wanna to go and include it here. So I'm gonna get rid of my XML and I'm gonna import, 
let's see, XML Builder 2. I'm going to set that equal to require XML Builder 2. Okay, so now I've got my XML Builder and I could show you, I could sit here and type out all, you know, type this whole thing out, but there's actually quite a bit of code here. So I'm going to copy it and paste it into my project and then talk you through it right now. All right, now because I want my XML parameter available to append to my URL, I need to insert it above there. So I'm going to paste it. And what we have is we are creating a new variable called root. And we are using XML Builder 2 to create an XML object. I have my address validate request. I'm setting a property on it called user ID. I'm going to pass in my user ID in there. And then I create a second element called address. And then a third element inside of it. These are nested called address one. And you'll see at the end of address one, after I set the text value, I use the dot up syntax. That tells me to wrap my text value in matching um, XML elements. So uh, this uh, we have these um, closing brackets, basically. It's just like XML is a lot like HTML. And we have to close off the address and close off the address validate request here. We then uh, set our XML equal to the root dot end. And we do a little print pretty, uh, pretty print. And then we're going to console log it out. And uh, let's go ahead and run this. It's still not going to succeed because we don't have our API key in there, but I just want to take a look at the XML. Uh, let's go ahead and run that. All right, cool. That's looking good. My XML is going in, but is still failing because I don't have my, pass my uh, username set. So let's go and uh, take care of that. All right, so I'm going to come over here and I am going to uh, paste in my user ID. And that's going to be redacted for you, of course. And we are going to save it and we are going to run it. And let's go ahead and do node index.js. And there we go. We are getting a valid uh, XML parameter and we're getting a valid response and it's fixing our zip code for us. But let's face it. You're a JavaScript developer. You don't want to be dealing with XML in your response. So you want to convert that to a JSON object. And we can do that with one line of code. All right. In our Axios here, we want to replace this console.log for response.data. And I want to instead, I want to create a new variable called obj uh, for object. And we are going to take the response data and we're going to convert it with the XML builder too and tell it we want it to be formatted as a JSON object. So I'm going to save my code and for the last time go back to our terminal and run it to see the output. And there it is, beautiful. We get our input is XML and our JSON response. So you can take this and you can modify the URL, you can change which API uh, parameter that you're passing, what the value is, and I highly recommend that you go check out USPSweb.tools. You can look at all the different operations. And while you're at it, if you decide that you want to check out some other cool APIs that have to do with addresses, go and check out lob.com. We've got address autocomplete. We've got reverse um, zip code lookup. We've got geolocation stuff. It's lots of great um, address verification and things to do with data about addresses. Go check out lob.com. Thanks for joining me today and have a great day.